Um, and then after that, what else do we need for cube? I don't think we actually need anything else. I think that's all we need. Oh, I'm going to change the color. That's what I want to do. I'm going to change the color equal to green. So red, green, blue, 255 for green, um, so that it shows up and is visible on the screen. And now what I'm going to do down here in this while loop is I'm going to say snack. I'm going to check if our the head of our snake has hit the, uh, the snack. And if it has, we're going to add another part to the body of the snake. Otherwise, we're not going to do that, right? And then we're going to generate a new snack and so on. So we're just going to say if s dot body zero dot pause, and this is going to be the head, right? Because we have it ordered. I don't need those brackets. Is equal to snack dot pause. And remember, these are both cube objects, so this works fine because they're going to be tuples. Um, then what we're going to do is we're simply going to say s dot add cube, which is a method that we have there that we haven't actually written yet. And we're just going to say snack is now equal to, well, a new cube. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. Um, so all we're doing is now generating a new cube for snack. Uh, I'm sure I could put something in that like changed it, but this is just the way that works. Okay. So now that we've done that, we should be able to move around the screen and get the snack, but we need to code in the uh, add snack method here, which I believe I have here or add cube. So the add cube is pretty straightforward. We just have to figure out where we're adding that snack um, or where we're adding that cube. I don't know why I keep calling it snack to the uh, list. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out where the tail is and we want to add it after that tail. So tail is equal to self dot body negative one, the last element in that list. I'm going to say dx dy, which again is going to be our direction x direction y. I'm just shorting it, shorting it here. It's going to be tail dot dern x and tail dot dern y like this. Now again, you can do this in two lines. I'm just doing it like this because it's faster. And now I'm going to copy some again and we'll just go through exactly what this does. Okay, so pretty much uh, this looks complicated, but all it's going to be doing is checking what direction that we're currently moving in, like the head of the cube or, or the tail actually of the cube is moving in so that we can then make sure that when we add that um, cube, we know where to add it. So if we're adding it like to the right of the cube, to the left of the cube, above it, below it, um, and we can give it the correct direction to, uh, to be moving in. So pretty much um, what we do here is we just say we're going to append a new cube uh, to our body and its position if we're moving to the right, which in here we are because dx equals one is one less than the x position of that tail. So whatever the last cube is one less than that. And that's so that we don't add a cube per se to the right when we're moving to the right. And then we're just going to have overlapping cubes and you're not going to be able to see them, right? Same thing down here if we're moving down. That means, or not down, sorry, if we're moving left, that means we need to add the cube to the right side. Um, so one plus that tail, the exposition of the tail of the cube, um, or of the snake, sorry, so that we can um, have it in the proper position, right? And the same thing here with X and Y, uh, or with Y, so that when we're moving up or we're moving down, then we add it above, otherwise we move, we put it below. So I just stumbled through that because um, there was a lot of different words that are very similar. Anyways. What we need to do now is simply set the direction uh, for that cube. So now that we added it in, if we just left it like that, it wouldn't be moving anywhere. So we just need to change that to the current direction of that tail. So whatever the tail is moving, that's where this new cube is going to be moving in that direction. So we're just going to say self dot body negative one dot dern x equals dx. And then same thing down here, except we're just going to change these to y. Dern y equals dy and that again is just the uh, where our tail is moving at that current moment. Okay, so now that we've got all that done, it's time to see what syntax error we get next. Name rows is parameter and global. Hmm, one second. So I've actually never even ran into that error. Oh, global rows and it's, okay, so let's just make this R and let's change this to be, hmm, one second. Ah, we can just get rid of this. And this should work. There we go. So now we move around like this. The only issue is our snack is not being generated on the screen. And I don't know why that is exactly happening. Oh, it's because we're not drawing the snack. That's why. So now I'm just going to global snack up here. I believe that's what I called it. And I'm simply just going to say snack dot draw like that. And I got to give it a surface. So let's give it a surface. Let's run. And error name snack is not defined. 
it's because I didn't global it down here. So let's global that. Okay, so now we have the snack. It's on the screen. And you can see that when we collect it, we have that cube added to the end of our snake. And that pretty much is almost the game done. So all we need to do now is write that reset method. And then we need to just simply check like when we lose. Like right now the snake can go through each other, right? through itself. And you can see we have a huge error when the snake can go through itself. So we need to make sure that when we hit ourselves, um, we like end the game. And we need to write that message well, this method as well. So to do this, um, again, I'm just going to copy in this for loop. Uh, and then we'll kind of go th go from there. So let's move in here. Okay, so for x in range, the length of s dot body, uh, we're gonna say s dot body x, which is gonna be we're just looping through every cube in our snake body. We're checking if the position is in a list of um, all the positions after that works. Um, that's how we're checking the collision. If you want to do it your own way, um, go ahead. But this is the way that I like to do. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do um, is I just want to print to the console like their score, uh, just so that I know what it is. We say a score. Oops. And then we'll just say plus is the length of s dot body, but this is gonna have to be converted to a string unless I put a comma like that. So let's just do it like that. And then I am going to simply display a message box. So we'll say message box like this, message underscore box. Uh, we have a subject and we have content and we'll, we'll do that in just a second because I haven't yet um, actually coded that. And then we're gonna reset our snake by just doing s dot reset. And this is gonna take a position, which is gonna be our starting position again, 10, 10. Um, and then we're gonna break out of this for loop because if we collided once, we don't really care if we collided again. And we'll go back and we continue the game with a snake that has um, length one now. Okay, so our reset, um, this is pretty straightforward. All I'm doing in this reset is I am just gonna get rid of um, our turns. I'm gonna get rid of our body. Um, and I'm just going to change like the direction X and the direction Y. So maybe it's faster if I just copy it in and you guys can just copy this out. So pretty much all I'm doing is I'm setting a new head, um, which is going to be equal to, again, like whatever position we give in, because we can move it at a different position if we wanted to. I'm clearing self.body, which is again a class variable here. And then I'm adding head. I'm setting turns equal to blank. Direction X is zero. Direction Y is set to one again, so that we start moving. And you can see it's pretty much exactly what I have typed out here, except I'm just resetting the turns list. Okay, so now that we've done that, uh, all we need to code is message box. So this one's pretty easy. Um, you can see up here, just in case you haven't looked yet, um, I import tkinter stk, and then from tkinter I import message box. Now this is how you create a message box in uh, Pygame, and this is how you create one that actually shows up on top of the screen um, and that doesn't like float kind of below it or doesn't show up right away if you want to say that um so just watch this. this is extremely useful to use in other programs too if you if you copy out this uh function and then you just drag it into other ones so attributes topmost comma true what this simply does is we're creating a root oops which is not root dot tk it's root equal to tk dot tk which is going to be a new tkinter window we're making sure that this window is going to be on top of anything so if we have like a bunch of different windows open it just comes up on top which is what we want i'm just going to simply make this window now invisible and i'll explain how this works in a second and then from this message box um what do you call it method class whatever i'm just going to say message box dot show info and then we're going to do subject and content and this just takes it takes a few more parameters as well if you want but pretty much this just shows info um, given whatever subject we type in and whatever content we have and now i'm going to say try root dot destroy like that except oops uh pass and don't ask me what this does because honestly i don't know but it just works so pretty much it shows this message box um and i'm actually pretty sure the way that this works is it constantly keeps trying to destroy the message box um until eventually you click the x button and then it actually can uh, i think it's like something like that so anyways that's how you create a message box and with that we all we need to do is add a subject and content so i'm going to say you lost and our message will be play again Dot, dot, dot. Let's run the program for the last time and make sure everything is working. So there we go. I just need to get my snake to a length that is uh, large enough to the point where I can actually hit myself. 
Oh, okay. And there we go. So pretty much we ran into an error. Hmm. What is the error? I spelled attributes wrong. That is a lovely error to run into. Let's run back up here. Attributes, attributes, attributes. Where did I even make this function? I must have scrolled past it. All right, there we go. And I believe that's correct. Let's try this now. So I'm actually just going to go and see if I can. There we go. Okay. So we get a message that says, you lost, play again. And the reason I died there, by the way, is because while I was moving right, I moved left. So technically, um, the head of my snake actually ran into another part of it. So it says, you lost, play again. Um, and you can make that say exactly what you want. And then we can see that our guy just continues to move, um, so on. So anyways, um, I know that a lot of this has been kind of confusing. Some of the stuff's been all over the place. Um, but this was coding snake in Python. I tried to explain everything as best as I could. If there's anything that you want further clarification on, it's maybe something that's confusing, uh, leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you uh, with an answer. Other than that, if you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I will see you again in the next one.